SUS News went out into the field with 3D drone mapping and propeller aero to test out aero points. So a nice day out for us today. Um, Richard has come all the way from Australia to tell us just how good his uh, propeller aero points are. And Luke is going to uh, be going to be proving it because Luke's a grown-up real surveyor. So what are you doing? Well, actually, Richard, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. um, what are they? How's it work? Oh, we haven't got one here now. Have we laid them all out? Well, we have laid them all out, but there's one just uh, behind us there. Basically, they're just high density uh, foam mats. Uh, they've got a solar panel and a lithium battery, and they're passive units. They'll just collect data from the satellite network, and then after a period of 45 minutes to an hour and a half, they've collected enough points to get an accurate position if it's inside the corrections network, up to a centimetre on the X, Y, and Z or if we've got a known point like uh, Luke's going to provide for us, then we can also get that same accuracy when we're outside of the corrections network. So what are you doing, Luke? How are you going to prove that this is accurate? Well, we're running two, two tests here. Probably the most accurate way of doing it is that we actually measure with the standard GPS um, onto the points and see that uh, we get the same results or within the same sort of tolerances as what they say they can be. Um, that will be our first one. The next one would be is to actually put it how people would normally use them. So using them with uh, traditional photogrammetry done with a drone. And then um, we'll run a, run a basic photogrammetry processes with, uh, with his points in as control and align the models to it. And then actually do a bit of Q, some quality assurance marks on the ground to see that they do do come up in the right space. So that would be a good indicator, I suppose, for the average person. Um, and then we'll be testing with the PPK system of ours as well, without any ground control, and see that we all get the same answers. So it's effectively three tests all in one, and we should all get the same answers if everyone's equipment is tuned correctly and operated Richard, what, correctly. Richard, who, who buys propeller aero points, and, and why do they use them? Uh, look, I think there's a there's a number of different use cases. I think ultimately, um, the, the number one is on smaller sites where you know it doesn't necessarily make sense to to set up traditional ground control. Um, on a lot of sites where you have fixed ground control, obviously you don't need the error points, but it just allows you to get that flexibility and that survey grade accuracy that you get with ground control on the sites where it's either pros, uh, cost prohibitive or doesn't really make sense to do traditional ground control. You mentioned the word cost prohibitive. What is the cost for a set of aero points? Uh, so currently the set of 10 is 6,000 US, or you can get the extended range set for larger areas, which is 20 units for 10,000 US. So for the 10, 10 units, what sort of area are you, are you hoping to cover with that or make more? Uh, that'll right? comfortably cover about 70 hectares. And luckily the, the site that Luke selected for us today has just come in at about 65, so we're not anticipating any issues. So yeah, pretty simple. We just press the button once, wait for the light to go red and then we've got 60 seconds where we can find a nice place to put it. Um, Did you just place it on the corner for a reason? Uh, I just wanted it to, I just felt good about that. Really what you want perfect, in a perfect world is uninterrupted view of the sky on a 15 degree angle. So I just wanted to get it away from... Oh, okay, from example, this little low wall over here. Just, okay, yeah, yeah I got it. Yeah, very good spot, yeah I'm with you. Anywhere here would have been fine. Let's see how good they are on the power lines. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's try it out. In no way force that. In no way force at all. It's a lovely organic bit of conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you mean right underneath? I think he means right underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Just far, yeah, far enough from the. Yeah. Just make sure nobody can see him. I'll see. We'll go. Well, this is a good test because. Um, we've actually had people say before is one of the things, you know, what if they get stolen? So yeah. it'd be good to see if we collect 10 at the end. So the good news is the first AeroPoints unit that we placed out has been logging now for about 45 minutes, which is sort of the minimum time that you want to get into them to get that really accurate data. And obviously by the time um, Luke gets airborne, does the flight, uh, there'll, be, there'll be plenty of data on all of the units.
We did an aerial survey, of course we did. It's the name of the game, it's what we're all about. After the aerial survey was completed, we went back to collect the 10 aero points that we had laid out. And when we collected the aero points, we put Luke's very accurate fancy measuring equipment on top of it, and we made an accurate note of exactly where each one of those points were. And we're gonna add that into the mix when we do our results video, which will come out shortly. So this is the one that we purposely made in place to give it a hard time. It's directly underneath some power lines. So yeah, we locally we think there'll be issues with this one. What do you reckon though? You reckon it'll all be well, fine? Actually, we actually, I don't think we've done the power line test, so I'm just as interested as you guys are to see what happens. But I then, think it should be an issue. If if a one point has got issues, I guess you just bung it out, that you just Correct. remove it from the yeah. equation. If it's a dud point, it doesn't take it into account when calibrating the others. Yeah, no, we've, we've never lost one yet, actually. Oh, you haven't? Anywhere. Oh, I thought no. you said you had lost. Nobody's ever lost one anywhere? No. That's amazing. Oh, I think Africa will change that equation <laughs> for you. Really rapidly. Yeah. <laughs> well, so far, I mean, that's the 10th point, so we've got 100% recovery rate for the entire continent so far. <laughs> It's very pleasing <laughs> from our sample right. size of one. Thank goodness we didn't let the side down there, eh, Luke. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was very likely that it would be us that let the side down there. So uh, this one's been logging for a bit over two hours now. So turn it off. We're just going to press the button again. And it's going to start blinking because it's looking for the Wi-Fi hotspot. And it's not going to find one, so it'll turn off. And then it's going to try again a bit later. So that point is now safely stored. So it's it's on board. It's stored all its data on board, and it's waiting to see a Wi-Fi hotspot somewhere yes. or other. So and I see just on your on your left hand side, there's a solar panel there. So is that all that keeps it alive? Do you plug That's it in it. to charge it or no, anything no. like that? No, that, I mean this all. It, it charges faster than it uses its power. So it, in theory, they shouldn't run out of power at all. Okay, so as soon as they're out in daylight, then they they've got enough they're power to, to work. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iOS device here and turn on my personal hotspot and hopefully I'll press it once to turn the light, turn the arrow point back on and then I'm going to press it a second time so it goes into upload mode and if my hotspot is playing correctly, okay we've got a little blue thing there saying that it's made the connection and we've been, this one's been logging for about two hours so in theory, I oh know it's gone from steady blinking to fast blinking, which means it's uploading. And yeah, generally for about every hour of data logging, you might expect up to a minute for the upload time. So that'll just keep blinking while it's uploading. You're quite lucky because you're in an LTE area, which is unusual for South Africa, yes. um, just on the outside of the city. So otherwise, if you, if you couldn't connect to the web via your phone, you take these back to the office and use the office network to load use it all. Use the office network, or you can use a dongle that's you know set up to, to do these. But you know the beauty is if you do have the hotspot on your phone, you can obviously just set them all into upload mode and put them in the back of your car and have the hotspot open and it'll upload. Okay, great. So the light's now turned off, which means that that point has successfully uploaded uh, to propeller. Um, I won't try doing all the others now, just because it, it is a bit slower on on the hotspot, but. Yeah, that point's now safe and we got the information. So they won't actually, to make sure you never lose any data, they don't delete okay. the data that they've logged until they've successfully uploaded. So if you lose connection halfway through or anything, your data's all still safe. So now that's cleared itself down, it's ready to start again, next um, job. It is, but the other thing is you, you can actually do multiple jobs on the error points before you upload them. So for example, these ones have been safely logged, but they haven't been uploaded yet, what I could just do is turn them on again and place them out in a different okay. spot. So in the, in that method, you could use a set of 10 and do a much larger area if you were gonna fly it in segments. Okay. So you're just telling me that things are all calculated. What does that mean? So now as we finished our survey and driving back to our base, we've um, I've just managed to calculate everything, uh, shift it onto our local system using that trig beacon and uh, already uploaded to Dropbox. So in theory, the minions in the office could already start working on the on the job. But they haven't got any of the images, of course. They haven't got the images yet. If I really wanted to be super efficient, I could, I suppose, upload those to Dropbox to be yeah. better. But um, 
yeah, for now we're ready to go. There's no further further work that needs to be done. We can do it again in the office just for for our own sakes, but yeah, so that much good. With your GPS tagged images from your aeroplane, right. that will now, when you chuck it into software, some software wizards or elves will now apply those corrections and all will be good. So that, that's all you need to do now. So we've already calculated a position for our base that our whole survey will be based off. So where we were recording from, we will now be able to shift it automatically. Where we're driving back to now, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this coordinate now, where that antenna is sitting there now, we've calculated a very good, a very good fix for it, and uh, all our geo referencing for our images will now be relative to this. Place. Relative to that. So this is zero, if this you will, is, zero is, zero. That's ground zero for us. Yeah. And then you'll move. Will everything then? You shift that, whatever that result is, to to match the ground. That's correct, yeah. And uh, then we'll know precisely where every single frame was taken. We can calculate it exactly relative to this. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll see what the propeller ones, if they come out within the same, within same the region. Same thing. And if the other testers, like we said before, is we'll be able to also, since we've measured on top of the propeller points as well, we have a good example. Yeah. So we're testing everything against itself and hopefully we should get all the same answer.